Hello everyone, I'm Dragons After Dark, and today I'm going to go over some suggestions you can use to turn your Beat Saber songs into fitness workouts. This isn't an exhaustive list, just a few things you can incorporate into your sessions. I didn't do an actual routine, since as far as I know, you're not going to be able to watch me and do the level at the same time. The song I'll be using today is Country Rounds on Easy Mode because it has a steady beat, and Easy Mode because I'll be suggesting mostly leg exercises. Doing it on Easy Mode doesn't mean it'll be easy, I promise. I work out six days a week, including strength training, and my legs were toasty by the end. Before you begin, don't forget to warm up to help avoid injury. If you already have injuries, don't try any of these movements unless your doctor and or physical therapist gives you the okay. If at any point you feel anything besides normal muscle fatigue, stop immediately. Now, let's start with some movement. One of the things I notice in a lot of videos is no one moves, or they just kind of sway. Picking your feet up completely off the ground to the beat is going to go a long way toward engaging the bigger muscle groups. You can march in place, tap your feet back and forth, or if you have the room, switch your lead foot. For the last two, you can try staying on the balls of your feet while you do it for extra muscle engagement. Remember, just like with calf raises, you'll want to focus on pushing most of your weight through your big toe slash the ball of your foot directly behind your big toe. Since you'll be in constant motion during the song as opposed to static like with traditional calf raises, I find it's easier to stay balanced. You also don't need to over-exaggerate your feet into Barbie mode. Instead, just try to keep your heels just off the floor. If you're looking for something a little more engaging, you can also do squats. I'd recommend quarter squats because anything lower will tend to engage your arms for balance and you need those to hit the blocks. Note, there is some debate in the fitness community about knees over toes is okay or knees over toes is never okay. It all comes down to what your knees can handle. The two types engage different parts of your knees, basically. That said, generally you're going to want to keep your knees behind your toes because this is what is going to work best for the majority of people. Keep in mind Mind, if you have longer legs and it seems like you always end up knees over toes, try pushing your knees outward as you go down. For a good squat, keep your feet shoulder width apart, your weight in your heels, back straight, and don't let your head go past your knees. Whether you prefer a toe straight forward or at an angle will depend on what's most comfortable for you. Keep in mind, they will engage different muscles. Toes forward engages more muscles overall, but toes out or a plie slash sumo squat will target your inner thighs, whereas regular squats do not. Moving on, you can also do lunges. There are so many kinds of lunges, it's practically criminal. I'm not gonna lie, I don't like doing lunges, but I find they're easier for ducking walls than full squats, especially once my legs get fatigued. For these, don't forget to switch sides. You'll want to figure out where the halfway mark is for the song or switch sides freely as you see fit. In the image I have here, I'd suggest a range between the woman on the left and the woman on the right. Notice how the one on the left has a closer distance between her back toe and front heel and her back leg is out more at an angle. That's what you'll want to start with. This is going to give you more control and balance because the parallel space between her feet is wider, whereas the woman in the middle has a very narrow space between her two feet, making balance trickier. The caveat is you'll need to sit back more for ducking on the left one, whereas for the one in the middle, you'll just be going straight up and down. Note, the further back your knee is, the harder it will be to get all the way back up to hit blocks that are higher up. For form, Keep your back straight and your front knee in line with your front heel. Your back leg is for control and balance, and you should be using your front foot to try and push the ground away from you. This means your front leg should be way more engaged than your back leg. You can also do side lunges. Side lunges are kind of an unholy combination of a lunge and a squat. Lucky us, have I mentioned I don't like lunges. Again, 
We want to do a quarter position instead of a full lunge for mobility purposes and hitting the blocks. For these, I prefer to keep my stance, which is just wider than my hips, instead of doing the step to the middle then step out into the lunge ones you typically see. The good news for side lunges is you don't have to worry about making sure both sides get equal time since you'll be moving back and forth in time to the beat like a human metronome. Now for the variations. I tried to show a variety of ways to do things during the song and I came up with a few that murdered my legs in a good way. I did ones where I held the quarter position and either pulsed with the music or remained static. Or you can do something more dynamic where you go down on a low block arrow then come back up. I also did ones where I entered the down position on a low block and stayed that way until a high block came along, either pulsing or remaining static while I waited. I consider low blocks anything below chest level and high blocks anything at chest level or above. You can also add a resistance band. I personally prefer the fabric ones over the rubber ones because they don't roll up as you use them. You can also combine things any way that you want. Have fun, go wild. But if you're over 30 like me, not too wild, your joints thank you for your discretion on the matter. Some things I'd suggest if this is your first foray into this type of fitness or if you're unsure of how well you can keep up with the movements and the song. One, turn on no fail. Two, turn off walls. Three, don't give up. If you miss a cue or block, keep going. Take breaks even during the song. You can always actively scale what you're doing. If you start with squats and your legs are dying before the end of the song, switch to one of the foot movements. And if you need to scale it back even further to just hitting blocks, to that too. You know your body best. 5. None of us are going to look cool while we do this, so don't worry about looking or feeling silly, especially if you mess up. In reality, the only way you can come close to messing up is if you give up completely. Number six, don't overdo it. A little soreness the day after is fine, but you don't want to put yourself out of commission. If you notice your muscle fatigue isn't going away even with a decent, roughly three minute break, it's time to switch to only hitting blocks. Or if you're done for the day, do some stretching. Remember, for stretching, you should be relaxing into the position, not forcing yourself into it. Number seven, Fitness is a lifestyle marathon, not a sprint. You want to build slowly so you're able to make fitness a habit rather than an occasional fad. Well, that's going to be it for me. I hope this was useful. And if you have any fun suggestions on how you make your Beat Saber more fitness oriented, let us know in the comments below. I hope you all have a great rest of your day or night. And until next time, happy sabering.